Okay, so we're going to get started and um, just a little bit about what we'll do today. The first half will be talking a little bit about Hugo and the folder structure and files that we have in the repo right now. And then the second half, we'll get to test some things out and go over some stuff for the next meeting. And then I will share these slides after the workshop uh, as well. Okay, so this is the um, setup and like uh, prerequisites for today. So if you look at that document, um, this is gonna have everything that we'll talk about today uh, before we start messing with stuff. And at the top, you'll see these uh, prerequisites. So um, having a GitHub account, VS Code and Hugo installed, um, then get installed and authenticating with VS Code. And there's links to each of the parts of that workshop in the document as well. So if you want to kind of look through that, if you run through the whole GitHub workshop, then you'll have all of this set up. But if you wanted to look at specific things, so you're running into having to authenticate again or something, uh, those specific places are also linked. Uh, what we'll do today is fork and clone the repo. So we'll fork on GitHub and then we'll clone it in VS Code. If you've already done that, um, there could be an issue with the submodules because we had to update uh, the themes folder on our repo. So there is a command that you can run for that as well that will be linked in the document. Um, because for cloning the website repo, we have to clone recursively versus you can usually just clone as it's shown in the GitHub workshop. Um, but because we have submodules, we have to clone recursively. So this is what we will focus on right now real quick, just to run through um, forking that again. Because you have the option, if you have already cloned it, you can run that command. If you look in the document link, it should show you this command right here, get submodule update and it recursive. Or if you want to, um, you can just delete your fork in GitHub and we can fork it again because I'll walk through forking right now. Um, so if we go to the repo and we see this fork button up here, we're gonna go ahead and click that and you'll select where it's gonna go. I have a couple of different organizations, so I'm making sure it goes to my account. And then you'll go to the code button and do this little copy We'll open up VS Code, and you should be able to do um, Control Shift P and do Git Clone Recursive. If it's only showing you Git Clone and not Recursive, you can type in Clone, and it should give you that option. And so you'll click that, and then Clone from GitHub, and paste that link in here, and then hit Enter, and we'll select where you want to save it. And then once it downloads it, it will say, do you want to open it? We'll hit open. And then you should see all of the files here. And so if you don't want to fork it again, like I said, you can run this um, command in here, just open a terminal, do terminal, new terminal, and you can run that command in here and then it should be fine. And if you guys can give me a thumbs up or something to let me know if everybody's good. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now we have forked and cloned and we have opened it. So you should see all the files in there. So now we're going to kind of go over what we see here. Just so we understand kind of like the folder structure and how things work. So Hugo, just generally, it's um, an open source static site generator. Um, and you can see this link will show you um, their website and kind of more about them. And a static site generator is basically um, a tool that will generate static sites in a specific format. 
and compared to like a dynamic site like WordPress, it lets you have more of like a minimal approach and you don't have to learn how to deal with like databases, backend server languages, um, and you can use basically a lot of text files and you don't have to code everything yourself. It just kind of helps simplify things. So you can use programming logic like if statements, for loops, uh, short codes with built-in functions. You can reuse pieces of HTML. Um, and it, it's just kind of like a nice way to simplify things. So instead of having to uh, program a bunch of things, a lot of things are in plain text and reusable. So it just helps with that. And then if we look at our folder structure, if you guys see, this is the link to the original Roxo themes repo, you'll notice that our files look a little bit different. And the reason for that is that their repo is formatted to be used as a theme. And we are using that theme as a folder in our repo. And so what we've done, how you see all these like archetypes, assets, content, data, all that outside of the themes folder is we have copied all of these files from this example site that they had set up outside into basically the root of our own repo. So it's gonna be using this themes folder, but we have this example site that we can mess with. And so when you look in the themes folder, you'll see those are all the contents and structure of that original repo for that Roxo theme. And we copy these out so that we can edit them and that's something to note. Um, we only want to copy out the files that we want to edit to override something in the theme. Otherwise, we want to leave those files in the theme because the theme is kind of there for things to just work as they're shown in the theme. But if there's specific things that we want to override, that's when we copy them out and we put them directly in our repo. And we need to make sure they have the same path so that they will override. So for example, if you look at layouts, we have index.html, and that will override let me close that, the layouts index.html in the themes folder. But anything that we don't copy out to override will just be used as it is in this themes folder. And we just never want to modify the themes folder directly because that's a good way to break things. <laughs> um, and then something else you might notice is we have this config file. And that is what instructs Hugo on how we want things configured. And it'll say what theme we're using as well, if you see this up here. And then we have a few Git files as well. And so for the Git files, um, just a little bit of background on that, your Git client is kind of like a browser, but instead of looking at websites, you are accessing Git repos. And so all these files that start with this .git change how your Git client's like settings for how it's supposed to interact with the repo. Um, so we have different kinds of .git files. So we have git ignore, where we can specify things we don't want to include in the repo. And the reason we have to do this is because there's some files that when you run the Hugo server, they just get dynamically generated. And so we can't just delete them because the next time you run the server again, it'll create those as like every time you do that. So we want to specify in this dot get ignore um, what folders or things that we want to ignore. And so for right now we have a resources folder that we want to ignore because that's something that gets dynamically generated every time. And we'll see that in a minute as well. And then get attributes is where we can specify how you wanna read or interpret like certain things um, with your files. And currently the only thing that's being used for is to prevent like Windows modifying certain text files because Windows doesn't have the same like line endings compared to more widely accepting formats. And we won't talk about that too much here, but um, that's just what that's doing. And then get modules, basically since we're using somebody else's repo, they're, as our theme, that's considered like a sub module. And so in Git modules, we can specify what other repos we want to use. And so you'll see up here, we've got sub module themes, Roxo, and then where that's coming from. Are there any questions on this stuff so far? Awesome. Yeah, just stop me if you 
or curious about anything too. Um, so this forestry file, this is something we don't really have to talk about too much. This isn't being used. It's just something that was set up if you want to use it in their example site. And forestry is basically like a content management system for people who don't want to deal with code. Um, so it's something that was just here if we wanted to use it, but I'm pretty sure you have to pay for that too. So that's not really something that's getting used right now. Um, and then we have this archetypes folder which for now just has this default.md and that's a markdown file. Um, and currently we just have that default one. And then if we look in the assets, we can see CSS, um, JavaScript and SCSS. And so in CSS, we are using Bootstrap, and you can learn more about that here if you want. Um, we've got JavaScript files for handling different things. So uh, vendor is going to be using jQuery if you want to learn about that as well, um, which is just a JavaScript library. And then we have a form handler uh, using Ajax, and you can learn about that as well. And that basically just lets us have those form submissions without reloading the whole page. Um, and then they have a script to handle scrolling that adds like um, some of those effects that you see and helps scrolling be a little bit smoother. There's sp like special ways to do that. Um, so if you're interested, you can look at that as well. And then SCSS is basically sassy CSS and it's a style sheet language that compiles to CSS, but it allows you to use like variables and functions and stuff. So if we look, um, you see things like secondary font and important and all this other stuff that um, is just basically easier to set that somewhere else. So these are variables that like we said, on the site, we want our primary font color to be this and secondary font color to be this. So if you could just reuse these and uh, it just helps simplify that stuff. And you can learn more about those as well with those links. And then we have our content folder, this is where we have our different categories of pages. And this is, these will be markdown files. Um, and markdown is basically an easier format than just everything being in HTML. Because if we look at this, um, it's more readable and it's a little bit easier to use. And so here's a, a cheat sheet as well for syntax on that, if you want to look. Um, and Basically, any page that you have, you can have its own like markdown thing, but it will have what you specify as like the template stuff in it too. And so we have different types of pages here. Um, and we can add to that and remove things as well. And then the data folder, um, this has a bunch of YAML files. And I I'm not an expert on YAML, I'm not going to try to explain this, but if you want to look at that, um, you can go here. But basically, these contain um, like information that you would find similar to a database. So if we look at this team YAML file, uh, we'll see all the members of the team and you can see all of their information. So they ha each have a like profile picture, a name and like their role. Um, and so this is something that if we look at, um, currently it's in the themes folder. If we go to layouts and we go to partials and team HTML, what we can see is that um, it'll pull from the members kind of in like a loop. And so we can keep all that data together, but then just display it um, and call it over here and set up how we want each of those pieces from each of those members to be displayed. So it's kind of like a little database um, type of information that you can include in those files. And then layouts, um, you guys kind of saw that a little bit, but that is used to have all of our like HTML pages. So it's like the structure for different kinds of web pages so if we I'm gonna close that, um, if we look, we can see like 
list pages versus single pages and they'll call other things as well. So it's reusing a lot of code. Um, if you want specific things for about pages, then we would have specific structure for that. You've got your home page, which is the index page. Um, 404 is where we could put what we want them to see, like if a page isn't found. Um, and the partials is like where we can put pieces of code that we want to get reused in other pages. So like the footer, we have all of this stuff for all the different like things that you can click on in the footer that will get reused um, in other pages. So for example, like the home page uh, should have, well, they don't have a footer in here. But like, if you see the partials, we've got all these different partials that are getting loaded on that home page, so that you can specify those and then just call them. So that's where you'll keep layouts kind of organized like that. So you, if you have specific things for like your about pages, your blog pages, we've got um, default HTML pages, and then like partials that can get reused as well. And right now, the only ones we've copied out to play with are 404 and index. But if we want to start overriding other pages, then we can copy those out as well. And then resources. Um, so I'm going to run the Hugo server real quick just to show you guys. This resource folder popped up and it's grayed out. Um, you can see that these are a little bit gray compared to everything else as well. And that's because in that get ignore, we said ignore that resources folder. But that's what's getting uh, generated every time. And we just don't need to commit these to the repo because they're not important. So that will get grayed out essentially every time you run the server. And then we've got the static folder, which has our image files, and those are organized by categories. And the static folder in the themes is um, also has like CSS and font awesome stuff. And if you want to check out some stuff about font awesome, um, you can see that here as well. Now we already talked a bit about the config file. The note here is that you don't want to make changes in ours unless it's absolutely necessary, um, because that can also break things pretty quickly. But you can make changes in there. The one that you don't want to make changes in is the config file that's in the themes folder. That's one that we don't want to mess with because our config file will override things if we want it to. We don't have to mess with the themes config file. So that's just good practice is not to mess with the one that's inside of that. But our config file is also where we can specify routes. So like our menu navigation, where we want a form to submit to, um, where social media like links will go. Um, and if you want to look at that, you can see kind of all the, the things that they've set in here. And so the social media links are something that's pretty persistent in the footer. So that's something that would also get specified in here too. And then if you guys want to know more about Hugo and stuff, you can see this guy's video. He actually has, um, he has a whole tutorial set on Hugo, but this is the one about like directory structure if you want to check that out. Um, but he's a good resource for that too, if you just are interested in doing some more stuff with Hugo. So that's generally kind of how this is laid out right now. So our next thing, oh, we don't need that full screen, is going to be to play around with it. Um, and if you aren't able to play with this in VS Code right now, you can look at the files on GitHub as well if you want to see like what's in them. Um, you can explore that like on the repo directly. So we're going to try our first um, change here. But just a note, if you're ever editing files, you always want to make sure you pull from GitHub to make sure you have the latest version of whatever branch you're working in, um, especially if you're working with a team because if somebody made changes and you didn't pull down before you started making more changes, when you push it, you could have um, merge issues. So ideally, you'd be working on different parts and there shouldn't be some issues merging. But um, it's always a good practice to go ahead and pull. But for right now, since we forked and everything should be fresh, we don't need to worry about that. But that's here just to um, tell you how to do that for in the future. 
So we're gonna try changing the body color first. So if we open the folder um, and you see all your files, you'll go to assets, SCSS, and then look at variables.scss. And so if you remember, we talked about um, some of those variables that you can set color values and stuff for. So that's what you'll see here. So we've got like body color, primary color, um, and these can these variables can get reused um, throughout the other files. So if we oops, want to change this body color, you can actually hover over this and um, it'll pull up this color picker and you can just play around with it and pick a new color. Um, and you wanna pick one that's going to be enough of a difference that you'll notice a change. So if I, let me control Z that really quick. All right, so we're kind of at a white right now. I'm gonna make it black just for a change. And then what we'll wanna do is control S, so we'll save it. And then um, if you have Hugo installed, you should be able to do Hugo server dash D, hit enter, and it'll tell you it's running at localhost. So we can see the website now. And then um, close this. Got too many things open here. Now, here's your challenge. See if you can find where the change occurred because it says body color, but what is it the body of? So if we look through the site, We don't see, well, I see this black. Was this black before? I'm not sure. Um, we'll go to about. So this looks like it's changed. So this yeah. was on the- it, I mean, I'm purple, because that's like definitely not a thing that was in the site. And it's that, like where you are. Okay, awesome. And I think it, yeah. So it, it updated in a few places, not the main like homepage but it definitely changed the background. So this is an important note is that just because something is labeled body color, that doesn't mean it's like for the entire site. So when you go and test these things out, changing stuff, that'll be a good indicator of where that color is being used and what that's like linked to um, so that you can go explore that uh, further if you want to. So that's just kind of a cool note is that you can explore and see where that changed. So then if we wanna change the primary color, we can do the same thing. We're already in this file and you'll hover over and pick a new color. And then again, like enough of a color difference to notice and then save and refresh and see where that one happens. So we start out with this like pinkish color. So I'm gonna do like a dark blue and save it Go over here. You guys see where it changed? What was the server command? It's a uh, Hugo space server space dash D. I think the, uh, I in touch button, I don't know. I, if they get in the touch or like connect for a different color before, but I don't even, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, so I'll go control Z. So if you look at my screen now and then I'm gonna hit save. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So now we can see that that's being used for the button colors. And so we have some specific files that are for specific buttons because um, maybe not all buttons change. So this one didn't change. So you can start to see what is connected to certain things. Um, and that's a good way to like learn about each of these files and what they contain as well, because it can be overwhelming to try to go through all the files and like see what's in them. But if you start messing with some stuff, seeing where it's connected and um, that'll help you like learn kind of how things are linked. Okay, so we've changed two colors. Now let's try to change the footer
So if we go into the themes folder, this is when it's okay to go ahead and copy out. We'll go to layouts. We can go to partials. Let's see. Did I not put in here? Yeah. So we'll take this footer HTML and we'll right click. We'll say copy. But notice we don't have a partials folder in here yet. So we're going to do new folder inside of layouts and call it partials. Make sure that we have the same path. And then we will, as long as you're highlighted over, right click, paste, and then I'll put this footer file in here. And we can see towards the bottom, this part right here. I want to visit again. So if we look at the website and we go down, this is the text that's right here next to this arrow where we can jump back up to the top. So try changing that to anything you want. So we could say, um, oops. I'm gonna say, take me to the top. And they have this break in here just for spacing um, so that it would be a line below it. But you could remove that and see what happens too. So if we save this and we go refresh, go down, we got take me to the top. And so now you've gotten some practice copying out the folders you need and making sure like the path is correct and then we can change that. And notice we did not change the footer that is in the re, uh, themes folder. We changed our own up here. And so we're just gonna leave that. You just always wanna copy it. Were you guys able to change that? Yep. Awesome. Let me know if I'm going too fast too. I don't know. I think half are watching and half are trying to keep up. So let me know. Okay. And then so our next challenge is going to be replace a team member. So if we go to our data folder and we check out that team file that we were in before, and you can see all the data for each team member. So make yourself the new creative director. You can add your name and a LinkedIn link. So you can change a link here and you can always add photos to that resource folder or the images folder um, later if you wanna test out like adding a picture. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna change the name and I'll leave creative director. And instead of LinkedIn, I'm just gonna make this google.com for example, and save it. And if we go back and we look at, I believe it's about, and our team, this guy has now become my name. <laughs> so we can see, the name has changed, and if I look at this link, it's not actually working currently. So um, why do you guys think that might be? So notice that the it's, icons didn't change. Yeah, it seems like it's just routed right back to the home. But notice if I, oh, I think this is gonna, yep. If I click on the other icons, those go where they're supposed to. Is that just for the one that you've changed or is that for everybody? So if I click on her Instagram, it'll still, yep, take me to Instagram. 
Medium should take me to Medium. But LinkedIn is not working. So just a note as well, the icons won't change because those are uh, being called in the team HTML partial and those are set in the config file. So how these are labeled and everything is already set for like what logos those will be. So when we're changing the link, that's not gonna change the logo in here. Um, we would have to do a few more things for that, but it should be able to change the link. So can anybody figure out why that might be redirecting to the homepage? And I'll give you a hint that now that we have this uh, partials folder, we can go to the partials in the themes. So we'll go to layouts, partials, and we'll find that team HTML file. We'll go ahead and copy that and paste it in our partials so that we can edit that if we need to. So let's look at that and see. Here's where hmm. the links are getting called. And so if we look at this partial um, team file versus this team where the data is what do you notice? Um, I don't fully understand like the code that I'm looking at, but it looks like it's looking for a link that ends in dot LinkedIn. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. That's a good observation that it looks like it's looking for. So what it's doing in the HTML file is this is, it's kind of like a variable in the sense. Um, so this dot medium, if you go to this folder, it it's like what it's named. So it's gonna look for the link that is labeled as medium. Does that make sense? I see, that makes sense. Okay. And so then what do you notice here versus here? The LinkedIn is, is it capital based? <laughs> yes, so. Has in is lowercase on the HTML. Perfect. Yep. So small thing, but makes a huge difference. They actually had an error in their code. So we can go in here and we can change this to a capital I. And then now this LinkedIn will match the label. So if we save this and we go back to this page, refresh, That'll go to where I linked it to. So nice catch. So that is how we have spotted an error. Um, and you can see how these are connected. So that this is referring to this label over here. So it'll look for whatever you put here. So since I made this Google, it just linked to Google. Um, but that's something that's like important when you're using other people's code is that um, just because they have everything set up doesn't mean that everything's working or that it's set up correctly. So we may find things like this where links are broken or something, you know, it could be a tiny error that it's misspelled somewhere or, you know, capitalization can matter. Um, so these are things like if you find them, that's what you can make like pull requests for or, um, or I'm sorry, not pull requests, you can raise an issue about. And so uh, those can be noted and you can fix it and then have a pull request to merge your new fix with the uh, main branch of the repo. So if you weren't here before, um, we'll be working with branches and you'll be making like changes or working on whichever section you kind of want to mess with on the site. 
on your own branch. And then when you've made changes um, that are hopefully like working and nothing's, you know, like having trouble compiling, you can go ahead and push that to GitHub and create a pull request. And then I'll look at the pull request and see if there's gonna be any merge conflicts. And if there's not, then I can go ahead and merge your changes in with the main um, branch. And so your changes will be implemented in the main branch where our basically site would be, um, if that makes sense. But these are the kinds of things that you would raise an issue about or go ahead and fix and make a pull request. And we'll talk more about those another time for like pull requests and stuff. For now, uh, this is just for you guys to play around with. And um, if you do find things that aren't working, it is good to note somewhere. And so that those changes can be made when we start working with the repo directly. Because uh, for now, we'll be just working with the forks until everything is set up. So a key now that we have made these changes and we've fixed something, we're gonna wanna go ahead and commit and push. So I'm gonna do control C, stop running the server here. You can go to my source control panel and you'll see this little four, that's how many changes we've made so far or like new files that were added. Um, so this U is saying these haven't been tracked yet because we just added those and we haven't committed them before. So we're gonna go to the source control since we have multiple, we're just gonna go up here, hover over changes, do this plus sign to stage all of those. And we'll come up with a message. So I'll just say colors and fixed. You can say whatever you want. Um, you just wanna be descriptive for what you were doing. And then we'll do control enter so now that's committed and we can look down here and see we have a little one with the arrow upwards. That means we have to push now. So we have one commit that hasn't been pushed. So we'll do control shift P and that'll pull up this command palette and we can hit push and then make sure you're selecting where you wanna to push to. And so I'm gonna to push to main and that should be the main um, from your fork, not the main girls who code repo. And that should, because of how you downloaded or cloned it, it should have that path already. So it'll go to your main branch of your fork. And then, yes, you can see these commands here if you want to run those later. And if you want to be added to GitHub, um, we're going to look at that in just a second. I'm going to see if I can go ahead and show you guys. So just so you guys know, this is how you can see. This is the Girls Who Code website repo right now. And you can see how many people have forked it. I can click on this three and see. So if I go to this, this will be my fork. And I can see that I pushed two minutes ago. And if I want to look at those individual um, commits, I can click on this. And so you see my commit message right here that I changed the colors and fixed LinkedIn. And if you want to, you can click on that and it'll show you all of your file changes. So red is removed and green is added. So if I added a whole new file, the whole thing is going to be green. Um, and you can just look at that. And so this is just a fun way you can play around with stuff, um, see where things are linked and uh, practice your commit messages and pushing. Um, and then when I see who has forked the repo, that's how I add you guys to the web team. So if I go back, you can actually see where you forked from. So if I go back to this original repo, I look at the forks and then I add those usernames. So we have currently our main web development team. And then that's broken down into admins, contributors, maintenance, observers, and reviewers. And so we only have a few people in here right now, but if you're interested in getting added to any of those, um, we still have this interest form where you can say like what position you want. You could have more than one if you want, and you can change those at any time. You could just let me know like, 
I don't want to be a contributor anymore. I want to watch, or you could start out as an observer and switch to a contributor. Um, but this link will be in the slides as well. So you can just let me know which position you want. And then for those updates that I mentioned, like if you forked the repo, I've added you based on the positions you mentioned in that form, if you filled that out. And uh, if you just want to watch, you can send me your username or if you want to put it in the chat here, I can add you to the observer team. But if you want to do like contributing, documenting, reviewing, um, it'll be important that you go through that GitHub workshop so that we can all be on the same page with uh, how to work with like uh, cloning, forking, pushing, pulling, uh, merging, all that, creating branches. Um, that'll be really important to make sure that we all know how to do. So that's what the GitHub workshop is for. And once you've gone through that workshop, I'll see your username on GitHub and that's when I can add you to whatever position you wanted. Um, but that's what this form is for, is to tell me those positions. And then if you have been added to the team, I've noted this in Discord, I just wanna mention it again, just practice with your fork for now. We don't wanna make changes to the repo directly yet because that'll be more uh, like another meeting going a little bit more into how we want to approach that um, how we'll divide the work and work with branches and um, essentially make sure that everybody can collaborate without uh, causing issues or working on the same pieces or um, something like that. And then, um, oh, that was something that we are planning to like work on things over the summer. You don't have to, but if you are around or want to work on this over the summer, we will probably still be chipping away at it. Um, we were trying to get everything set up this semester and kind of get our team together. And then we will actually start like working on different pieces of the website this summer um, and see how far we can get with that. Uh, since it's a template, we're hoping that maybe by the end of the summer, we should have most of it done, but we'll see that might flow into the fall as well. But if you don't end up working over the summer as well, we will hopefully have like um, smaller little development projects that we're planning for next fall, um, depending on who's in this position. I don't know who will be the web and media person after elections. So that was my next note is that um, the next meeting for this stuff is to be determined. We're seeing how elections go. Um, I should still be working on the website project, even if I'm not in this position, but uh, it, it might change how like meetings and other things are set up. So we'll, we'll see how that um, works out and I'll keep you guys updated. But in the meantime, um, now you should know kind of a little bit how to like change things and the general like folder structure. So you can feel free to like play around with all that and um, work with your fork. And if you haven't already, you can also work on that GitHub workshop. Um, but yeah, so those are the things that you can work on um, is playing with that and running through the workshop. And then you can always come by the code lounge that should still be happening weekly um, or email me if you guys have any questions on stuff. Um, and that's pretty much all I have. If uh, you guys had any issues and wanna hang out and work, work through some stuff or have some questions, you can let me know because I'll be here to help with that as well.